systems are supposed to reach equilibrium, right? Um, entropy always wins, like you were talking about the heat death of the universe earlier. Right. But the universe isn't really... You could say that the propagation and complexity from, you know, subatomic particles to atoms, like telescopic evolution, you remember that video? Yeah. I think conventionally people would say that this is like a temporary defiance of the second law of thermodynamics, which is to say that there's increasing order, um, increasing intricacy of uh, information or, uh, or to decreasing the disorder. From Yankee Cold there. Yeah. And uh, so people will ask, why is this defying the second law? Why isn't entropy just winning and smashing the shit? And you would say it's not on a long enough timeline or something like that, right? I have some new ideas about entropy, I guess, from just like getting new data. I don't know which one we're right right now. You know, trying to figure this out. But uh, I talked to a guy who's taking a physical chemistry class and in their entropy, in chemistry, entropy is an important thing that people measure between chemical reactions. And I asked him to explain to me what entropy is. And he said it was a, a very difficult to explain and complicated concept. And it had to do with uh, taking the, measuring the amount of energy at the beginning of a system and measuring it at the end and subtracting those and saying whatever was lost, we're just going to call that entropy. Because when work happens, some energy inevitably does not go directly where you want it to go because, oh, because there's a law. So maybe that's one way of thinking about it. And I feel like when you look at it that way, if you talk about the universe, then the idea of entropy is meaningless if you take the universe to be a whole machine. Because as it does work, it does not lose any energy. Because you can't subtract a beginning state from a second state and say, this energy went someplace else. And so in that idea, talking about entropy on the order of the universe is a meaningless statement. It's only relevant in between two comparisons. But you can't compare this universe to another. And comparing this universe to a future point in time doesn't count. The second idea is just to state that entropy is the tendency of energy to disperse. This follows a similar vein as the first example where the energy tends to want to disperse and not go on a certain path. That you, even though you set up a good funnel for the energy to go through, some of it wants to disperse. And as the energy disperses, this this idea that energy tends to disperse seems very axiomatic in terms of if the universe was a program. Like, number one, energy will tend to disperse. It's, it's bottom floor. You, yeah. can, you can't really analyze that. You probably don't need to analyze that ever. When evolution happens, all that simply happens is even though entropy means energy tending to disperse, when things go on, another layer appears. There becomes a pattern over that, or a, a meta over that. And in the pattern over that, it becomes a system that is that has self-generating funnels for energy. You are all living things, or just to take the example of humans, they're really obsessed with going into effort to make extropy happen, to order things yeah. according to their own order. And uh, people are something that evolution happens because of entropy. That's what, it, entropy is, is simply stated why anything moves. And uh, evolution, because of movement, e evolution is because of movement to particles, is the second idea. Third idea is that we are a product of evolution, and uh, 
we were created through entropy. We run on entropy. On the, on the bottom level, we run on entropy. If you look at the pattern as a larger whole, it seems like we're doing the opposite. And that's just part of the funniness of it. I don't think there's anything sort of like legitimate there. It's just that that's, it's inherently interesting. That's why living things are interesting. Because they're extropic? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. They're extropic on, but only at the next level. Because on the whole, we're not. I like the idea that I never really thought of the fact that you need entropy to run it all. Yeah, it, it, motion happens because of entropy. That's the idea. That's the axiom. Oh, I forgot the third thing. The third thing is that, and in God's debris, they talk about this too. And this is this is the essential observation where entropic gravity comes from. And in God's debris, they talk about entropic gravity actually. But entropic gravity approached being derived mathematically is extremely cool and interesting. But in entropic gravity and in God's debris, they say, all right, entropy exists, and it's based on entropy. But then they say, it's very obvious that we have this thing called gravity that seems to reverse entropy. Gravity is the tendency for matter to coalesce and create voids of entropy. If we were to measure everything in entropy, gravity is like negative entropy. What's going on here? I thought everything ran on entropy. Yeah, you know, what? Energy? Gravity is energy, but, you know, dot, dot, dot. So, like, in, in God's Debris, it does a little, like, it, it just states a simple thing. You know, it's not a physics book or a math book. It just says that there are two laws that counteract one another, and that's why the universe is interesting. It's not just the product of entropy, and it's not just the product of coalescence. Both are there, it starts with chaos, and that's why everything gets weird. This whole, this whole place is fucking weird, you know? This is weird, to be existing and perceiving it. But that's what that, in God's degree, it says that. And, it, and that's that, that statement that where entropic gravity, gravity comes from is also a cool insight, kind of. It, it relates gravity into being, the op into being obviously something that's not entropic. But, but, are you listening? It, what entropic gravity is, and why it's cool, is because it says gravity is a emergent phenomenon from entropy. After evolution happens in any, it, it defines like two or three extremely simple mathematical systems with only one rule, entropy. After that happens, just the way that the math is inherently, it's not like you have to do anything, is voids appear and they grow. And part of the noticing of this is the same, is the same idea as the first idea. Because when the void appears, the void is the lack of entropic things, kind of. So the, it, it calls them lines of causality. And what it says it is it, it defines a grid on the order of the Planck scale. You familiar with that? Yeah. And so, you know, like each grid, it's, it's across from the Planck scale. And it says these are all possible energy flows, which, you know, entropy describes the flow of, of energy. And taking that grid, it says something like, if there are, if there's a ray this way, and it runs into, I'm not going to say the arrows, I, I don't, I don't want to fuck it up for this guy, but. <laughs> for this guy. Yeah, Eric Verlind is the guy. But I've heard that name. I don't remember why. I might. I don't know. He, he he's only famous for this one thing. It, it, the paper came out in two thousand nine. I think the first one, two thousand ten. He wrote another one. Everybody paid attention to the second one, and people are tripping out because of it. But uh, yeah, gravity being an epiphenomenon, a, a direct emergent phenomenon from entropy. He shows very easily. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Okay, this is it. Because, because when the void forms, if we were to add causality in there, which is not necessary, 
because mathematically it's not that, but just the easiest way to say it is as the void forms, it pushes the energy flows away from it. So the entropy, th th we have a void of entropy that's growing. And uh, as the void grows, it pushes the entropic stuff away from it. For every amount that the void grows, it pushes exactly the same amount of entropic stuff away. So you can't ever change the amount of entropy. Gravity is the void of entropy, but it just moves it elsewhere. So on the, I, on the system as a whole, the idea of entropy is a meaningless statement. It's only, it only works relatively in the same line as relativity. You can only compare the entropy of two things. Not everything. It doesn't make any sense to say of everything. Right. I think I think that answered that. It does. That was pretty cool. Because the entropy of the universe, there's no point of reference. It is self-contained. Right. And we are an epiphenomenon of entropy. And that's, duh. I mean, energy moves according to entropy, so... If we move according to energy, then 